Um, Mr. Williams, tell me about the privileges or immunities clause. Uh, thank you for the uh, question, uh, uh, Senator. Uh, the uh, privileges and, community and uh, uh, immunities clause. Privileges uh, are immunities clause. Right. Uh, uh, that's uh, part of the uh, 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 Bill of Rights and part of the, uh, uh, I believe, the First Amendment. Uh, it's, it's been a while, Senator. Uh, my practice is uh, primarily intellectual property. Uh, so... Um, uh, it's been a while since uh, I've faced an issue uh, with the privilege and immunity clause. It doesn't come up every day in my the practice. Privileges or immunity. Privileges or, or immunity clause doesn't come up every day in my practice. What right. I can tell you that if I was faced with an issue uh, uh, that involved the privilege or immunities clause, I would uh, review the binding Supreme Court precedent on the issue and uh, apply uh, that binding precedent to the specific facts of the case in front of me. Okay, tell me what rights are guaranteed by the Sixth Amendment. Uh, Sixth Amendment uh, uh, guarantees uh, uh, right to uh, uh, right uh, to a speedy trial. Right. Uh, right uh, uh, to counsel. Right. Uh, and uh, also. Uh, uh, Right to speedy, uh, right to counsel, and also, uh, uh, that's the fifth right uh, against uh, self-incrimination, which is in the Fifth Amendment. Okay. Tell me what the holding was in Obergefell. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Senator. The uh, the the holding in Obergefell v. Hodges. Uh, Senator, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I haven't uh, had the occasion to. Uh, deal with that issue. Uh, I don't recall that specific case as I sit here uh, uh, in front of you. But what I can tell you is that if the issue decided in that case uh, came before me, I would uh, review uh, binding Supreme Court precedent and apply it to the specific facts of the case in front of me. Okay. Um, in 2015, Mr. Williams, you gave a speech and you said that the modern judicial system today is more racist than it was 100 years ago. Did you say that? Uh, thank you for the question, Senator. You're welcome. Uh, uh, I don't believe that's the uh, specific quote that I said. Uh, I believe you're referring well, let, let to- me, Let me read you the quote so there won't be any misunderstanding. Becoming a felon is more devastating today than when existed during Jim Pro, Jim Crow. And you were you were talking about the uh, judicial system uh, in Delaware. Thank you for the question, Senator. You're welcome. I made those comments as uh, co-chair of the Access to Justice Commission which was a commission that was created by the Delaware Supreme Court. Yes, sir. But, uh, that but I was asked. Tell to, me what the, you meant. The chair. I, I know. So, what, I read the uh, uh, the interview. I, tell me what you meant. I was referring to uh, a description uh, that uh, others uh, have made uh, to describe the condition of felons in terms of uh, the term Jim Crow, meaning. Well, well, let, me, let me stop you. Do you believe? that the judicial system in Delaware in America is more racist today than it was 100 years ago? Uh, thank you for the question, Senator. Uh, uh, no, I do not believe that the system today is more racist than it was 100 years ago. Uh, what I was describing what, was the... Uh, well, but, but why did you say becoming a felon is more devastating today than when existed during Jim Crow. Uh, I was referring to the conditions of, of, of the inordinate uh, amount of people of color who, when they become felons, uh, are, are faced with loss of economic opportunity, uh, loss of voting rights, uh, loss of driving license, loss but of But that happens housing, to an Hispanic as well, right? Uh, it happens to if you're convicted. It, it happens to everyone who becomes a felon, but the 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 task of the committee was to examine 
uh, the reasons why there are such glaring racial disparities in the population of people of color in Delaware as compared to and you the think population that's, you, you think of, that's of because people of racism? incarcerated. You think that's because of racism? Uh, I did not uh, say. Uh, my, I, I know. That, I'm that, asking you. Do you think that's because of racism? I believe that uh, race plays a factor in uh, Delaware uh, 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 across in in in, in across uh, the in Delaware and beyond, uh, and that uh, uh, studies have shown that uh, uh, there is a uh, disparity uh, in the prison population that just can't be explained by uh, just nature and it be coincidence in that race plays some factor. It's not the only factor. Right. Uh, economic uh, condition, money, ability to pay bail, et cetera, plays a factor and some other things play a factor. Uh, so at that time, I was serving as right, well, chair. Let me stop you because my, my chairman here has been very very uh, uh, indulgent. I'm going to ask you one last question. Um, do, do you think uh, uh, photo IDs, requiring a photo ID to vote is in, inappropriate? Uh, thank you for the question, Senator. Uh, the Supreme Court has held that uh, voter IDs right. uh, requirement for voting what do you per think? is permissible. What do you think? Uh, I, Senator, uh, follow binding Supreme Court precedent. Yeah, uh, but what do you think? Uh, You've written articles saying that, that that's racist, haven't you? I have not. Okay. I have not. Well, you've went, written articles opposing voter ID, have you not? I have not. Okay. So you think it's okay? I do. Okay. That's all I got. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for your indulgence. Of course. Um, thank you.